Welcome to the VB Toolbox. In this tutorial I will be teaching you about the list collection. The list is essentially just an array of any data type that you choose, be it a string, integer, uh, or even other objects and classes. What I will be showing you is how to um, add items to your list, uh, delete items, and various ways to read the data from your list as well. Um, there are a few different looping functions that you can use to cycle through your list data and find the values that you want to recover. Let's go ahead and get started by creating a new project. Click your new project link from your start screen and you can name that project whatever you want. I'm just going to call it my lists. And that will go ahead and generate a form template for us. And I'm going to add a few controls to get started here. I'm going to add um, a button for adding items to our list as well as a text box. So you can find those in your toolbox and drop them on your form. And I'm just going to do that and I will change the text caption on my button by going to the text property in the properties window and I'm going to change this to add item and I'm going to change my text box name to be um, let's call it txt new item I better change the name of my button too CMD add item. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and double click in the middle of our form and that'll gen generate a form load event. And I'm going to add a couple of variables uh, to the top of our class here. The first will be the one we're working with. The second will just be an example of something else that we can do with our uh, lists, different ways to generate the lists. So I'm going to make a public my list as new, and we have to use new to actually create a new instance of our list. So we'll say new list, and then it's going to say of and ask for a data type. And here we'll specify that we want a list of the type string, okay? And that essentially generates a uh, an array of strings. Um, alternatively, if you wanted to store integer values, for example, we could say public my int list as new list of integer. You could also do that with, you know, uh, Boolean values or even classes. Though Booleans wouldn't be very useful unless you had some relationship. Uh, to the index of those. Um, without some sort of relationship, those values would probably be kind of pointless. But anyway, uh, we probably won't use this one much. But I guess we could do an example. We should probably change this to my string list if we plan on using that. <clears throat> and as the form loads, I'm going to just show you first off how to add a new item to your list. So for example, I will say my <clears throat> excuse me, my string list and you can call the add um, method and then you just specify the value or object that you want to, to store to your array. So I could just say cat. <clears throat> so we've successfully added a cat to our array at this point. Um, it's important to note that you can add integer values to a string array, but you can't add string values to an integer array. I could say my string list dot add 15 and that will work successfully. But if I said my int list dot add cat it's not going to like that very much. So I could add a value of 21 
to my integer list and it would work just fine. So we got no errors when we did that. As soon as the form loads it populates uh, our lists with the values that we specify. Uh, it's not very dynamic though, we want to be able to add values to our list on the fly. So we'll go back to our form and I'm going to double click on the add item button to generate a click event for our button. And here we can say if txt new item dot text is not blank, so not equal to a blank string, because we don't want to enter values into our list if they're empty. Um, then I could um, say my string list dot add the value from my text box txt new item dot text. And then we want to give some indication that uh, this completed. So what I'll do is I'll just clear that text box of the value when, it, when we're done. So I'll say new item dot clear. So if it inserts the item into our uh, list successfully, then it will clear out the value. So we can run that if we want and test it. And it seems to be working properly. Now, what if we want to actually, you know, cycle through the values? What if we want to be able to read back from our list and find out what's in there? Well, there's a couple of things we can do. Um, one would be to pull those into either a combo box or a list box or a text box. Um, or we could just, uh, you know, fire a message box off uh, if we wanted to request one of those items. So, um, <clears throat> for a few examples, um, we can call the item by its index position. And these items are stored in our um, list with a, the in, it's a zero based index, sorry. So that means cat is at position zero, index zero, and 15 is stored at one. So I could say message box, once I've populated that list, I could say message box um, my string list, and then specify the index number of zero, and whatever is stored in the zero position is what it will call. So let's go ahead and run that. And it worked. So as soon as it populated our list, it went down here and, and grabbed the first index from that list, which is zero, and grabbed the value of that index. So the value was cat. That's a very easy way to retrieve your data from that. Um, alternatively, we could cycle through that and pull all of the values or uh, desired values from it. Um, if I try specifying an index value that is uh, does not exist, it will crash the application unless you have a try catch statement. Uh, for example, if I tried grabbing index value 15, it doesn't exist. Okay, it exists as a number, but it does not exist as an index. There's only two values in here, 0 and 1, so it's not going to like that very much. Uh, probably because we're running it in the form load, it's not going to explode on us, but uh, if we tried linking this to a button, it would crash the application. But it did not throw a message box. The value 15 is not found in there, or the index value, sorry. So we can set this back to 1 and it returns the number 15, which is in the second uh, index. So how about, uh, what if we want to loop through and see all of the items in our list? Well, there are three main ways to do this. Um, you can loop by the value that is stored, or you can loop by the index count, or you can use the uh, for each method and link to another sub or function. So let's um, 
start with a value loop. What we can do is use for each <clears throat> s, and I'm going to use s as uh, you know a string because you want to specify the the data type here that you are looping through. So for each string in my string list um, message box s. So whatever value is returned at each result that it finds in this list it will send a message box with that value. <coughs> so let's go ahead and test that. And we got cat and 15 and then it should hit the end of the list and return to our application. So that's working properly. That's one way to do it. Now we can add an additional value here. Dot add cal. <clears throat> so that's just one way of looping. Let's try another one. We'll try the index. Here we can say for um, since the index is an integer value, I'm going to just use i as our variable. I'm going to say for i equals 0 to my string list dot count. And count returns the total number of records. Now you have to remember that your array is 0 based. So if it, if it counts 5 records, that's 0 through 4. Um, so we have to subtract one from the count when we loop by the index value. Otherwise, it's going to hit the end of the array and not be happy. Um, so here we can say message box. And since we're returning the index value, we, instead of um, you know just calling the value here, we actually have to reference uh, the value from the index value of the list. So what I'm going to do is say my string list i. Okay, just like we did originally, uh, re we return the value of the I the index. <clears throat> so let's run that, and it should work properly. Whoops, my message box disappeared behind my application. There it is. So 15 and cow, and then it should hit the end of the list and quit. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and see what happens if we take off our negative 1 here. Cat, 15, cow, and nothing else. Again, I think that this would behave differently if I wasn't using it in the form load event, but kind of gives you an idea. Uh, let's see here. All right, so there is one final way that I want to show you how to loop through these. So I'm going to say, get, comment those out. And this is the for each method. And it's built into the list container or collection. And we're going to reference a sub by saying public sub. And we'll just call it list items and it will force the value of the index um, as it's searching to be passed through. So we say s as the data type and you know, let's go ahead and just put our message box here. We'll just say message box and then whoops, whatever is returned from this parameter which will be the value um, of the item that it finds while it's looping. We'll pass that parameter into our message box. So uh, here we can say my <coughs> sorry my string list dot for each and what we have to do is say address of and then we call the name of the sub that we want to reference list items. All right, so this method will go ahead and automatically do what we did up here, but it reduces it to a single line of code. So 
it's going to loop through all the items and every item it finds it's going to launch against this uh, sub here. So it's going to pass the value into the message box and then report it. So let's go ahead and run that. Cat 15 cow. So that's working beautifully. So those are uh, the various methods that you can employ to scan through the items in your list. Um, what if we want uh, to report them in a different manner or add the values that we find in our list to a more uh, tangible list like a list box or a combo box. Well if we jump back to our main form in our toolbox we can grab um, a list box and drop it on our form down here. I'm going to name my list box um, LBX items. Oops. Boy, I can't type tonight. Sorry about that, people. Okay, and I'm also going to want an additional button to grab the items um, from our list and push them into our list box. So I'm going to take our add item and copy that by right clicking on it and pasting it onto the form. And I think I'll stretch that out a little bit, change the caption text to um, get list items. Alright, and for the name I think I'm just gonna call it uh, CMD fill. You can call yours whatever you like. And I'm going to use this button to fill in this list. So uh, if you double click on that button, you will get your click event. And what I'm going to do is say LBX items um, dot items dot add, much like our um, list uh, collection going to use add and actually you know what I apologize we're going to want to do this in a sub and we'll call that sub from here I like to kind of spread things out a little bit so I'm going to say public sub um, I'm going to call it LBX for our list box fill. And I'm going to use uh, the value S as the data type string. Okay, so I'm going to push a string to the label box, uh, to that list box. So here I will say LBX items dot item dot add. And uh, the value that I want to add to our list box is the string from our list. So we'll pass it through this parameter here. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and sort that alphabetically. I'm going to say LBX items dot sorted oops not sorted equals true. And for our fill click event we can call this now first thing I want to do to prevent duplication of the items in there, if we don't do this, uh, each time we press the button it's going to add or pin the items to our list box. So um, I'm going to dump the entire contents of the, the list box. So I'm going to do uh, LBX items dot items dot clear and that just refreshes the box for us so um, it doesn't you know continually generate new copies of the items in our list box and then I will say my string list dot for each we're gonna use our for each loop here and we're gonna call the address of our new sub that we created LBX fill Okay, 
So if you remember from earlier, this is going to loop through every single item in our list and run the value against this um, sub that we created, passing the value through this through here as a string, and then add it to our list box items. Okay, so that's kind of how things are flowing here. I'm gonna go ahead and just run this. Whoops, probably want to get rid of those uh, message box tests that we ran before. run that again get list items so everything that is in our list has been sent to our list box um, what happens if we add new items look at that if you wanted you could tie you know make this <clears throat> automatically do this as well but I just want to do this as a demonstration so we can keep hitting that it won't just keep dropping them in here if we were to come down here and take away our clear then every time you hit this it continues to add them to the box so we want to dump the box and then regenerate it from our existing list in the background I'm going to go ahead and clean take that off of there. Okay, so what if we want to remove specific items from our uh, list and our list box? Well, <clears throat> to do this, we're going to want another button. So I'm going to come out here, grab this one, right click on it and copy, and paste a new copy of that on there. And I will change the name, uh, the caption text on that, the properties to clean list box. And I'll just change the name of it to CMD clean. All right, and if we double click that, we will get a click event for it. So, I think we're going to want another sub here so we can run another for each against this. I'm going to do um, CBX or LBX clean. So I'm going to say public um, sub LBX clean. And just like before, I'm going to pass the value as a string to our sub. And I'm going to want to pick something specific to remove um, from our box. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to say if s equals Zeramis, sorry, old Final Fantasy fan, then message box, go away, Zeramis. We don't love you. Oh, poor Zeramis. And then I'm going to remove him from the list. So I'm going to say my string list dot remove. And I'm going to remove it by its uh, value. You can also remove things uh, by their index value. And uh, I also want to remove it from the list box that we added to our form so it's not just uh, hanging out there while it's been deleted in the background from our collection. So I'm going to say LBX items dot items dot remove and I will do the exact same thing as I did from the list. Remove it by its value. Alright, oh, let's see. And in our click event for our CMD clean button I'm going to say my string list um, dot to list. Now this is very important. One thing that you cannot do with uh, these list collections is remove values from them or specifically the index values. You cannot remove them from your list 
while you're cycling through it. So anytime you're looping through your list like we did up here, if you had a remove in here for a specific value, it's it's going to throw back an error at you because you can't modify the collection that you're um, cycling through. So what you do to remove items while you're cycling, you create a copy of your list in memory by using the toList method. And then you work from that list and you can, because it's an exact copy, whatever you uh, send back to your actual list uh, will match what is here. So if you remove something, um, I'm sorry, you can remove something from your main list without physically sorting through it by referencing its value. I hope that makes sense. So <clears throat> we're going to loop through a collection or a copy of our collection and then remove items from our actual collection based upon the values in that copy. So we do two list and then we loop through that one with our for each and we want to call our address of LBX clean. So I hope that was clear. <clears throat> Um, LBX clean is going to remove items from our main list, from our actual list, while we cycle through a copy of the list. Okay. So let's go ahead and add a few items. Get our list items here. Say add horse. Um, add chicken and go ahead and hit your clean list box and nothing happens. Let's add Zeramis to our list. And then hit your clean list box. Ooh, it found Zeramis and it doesn't like him. So he said, go away Zeramis, we don't love you. And then he's removed from both the list box and our background list collection. So that's uh, how you can actually use your um, list and your list box together. Uh, if you wanted to add other items, you could uh, do this similarly, adding items to your integer array or an array of any other data type, including class objects. If I want to create a class you know, called animal with a bunch of different properties and um, you know, its own subs and stuff, you can certainly do that and you know you just reference the class name here and it creates a new list of your objects. So you can store entire classes and copies and of you know those objects, different instances of them. Anyway, that's pretty much what I wanted to show you here. So we've covered uh, you know adding items to your list, modifying your list, um, and cycling through it. So I hope this has been helpful for you. Uh, I will probably be doing a follow-up tutorial after this one uh, on actually adding objects to your list collection. And there are a number of other collections that we can use, uh, including stacks, queues, and dictionaries, which all have uh, very important uses. Uh, it can be very helpful for various application tasks. So. I hope this has been helpful to you. I'm sorry I was a little bit uh, fumbly tonight. Um, I wish you the best of luck on your applications. Thanks for joining me. If you know anybody that would find this helpful, please share it with them and uh, send me a like. I appreciate it. Uh, take care, everybody.